Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Isn't it good to be in God's house? I've got a story about a little boy. Not so little. He was probably grade school, high school, somewhere in there in Africa. And the story takes place in Mal- Malawi. And his name was Abedoni. Abedoni is not a different name. And he was walking slowly, not really paying attention to anybody around him. He was kind of, he was barefoot. He didn't have any shoes. He was kind of kicking the dirt up, making little dust in the, in the road. And there was little old ladies in their doorsteps, and they were busy making clay pots out of the, making some pottery out of the clay that was in front of, that they had. And little naked kids were running around, running into the house and behind the house and playing tag. And the young women were under the tree, the only shade tree in the village, and they were talking about what's happening and what was going on. And sometimes they would talk to their kids that were playing off near them. But he didn't notice any of this. He didn't see anything. He was just walking. I have so many problems myself. He didn't know anything that was happening. It was in two weeks. School was starting. And he was going to a school called Malamula. That's where we spent last winter. We were at Malamula last winter. And we would walk down to that school. We would walk down and walk around. And we saw boys and girls there. Probably some of them were grade school because they had grade school kids there and they had high school. And that's where he had gone to school the year before. And he it was two weeks, and he was wanting to go to school. He went there last year, and he enjoyed it. But he didn't have any money. It took some money to go to school. And he go, where am I going to get this money? What am I going to do? He had tried everything, and he needed money for a mat, and he needed money for a blanket and some trousers, and he just didn't have any money. So as he was walking, all of a sudden he saw Grandfather Manwala shuffling by, and he had a load of bamboo on his shoulders, and he was hunched over because it was heavy and he was old, and he knew that he was going to make a straw mat, and he was going to take it down to the village to sell. And Grandfather Manwala had promised him, he said, I will make a mat for you to take to school. I will make you a good mat. And he said, oh, thank you. That will keep my blanket clean. And he said, I would give you some money too, but I have hardly enough to feed my stomach and my old, mo- my old woman's stomach. And I'm too old. I can't hoe anymore in the garden. I just can't do it anymore. And he assured him, he said, that would be fine. That is okay. Something's going to work out. But it was now close to time for school, and it hadn't worked out. But one thing that grandfather, and he called him Gogo. Do you call your grandfather Gogo? No. Anyway, he called his grandfather Gogo. He had told him that he could pray, that prayer works. Grandfather was a Christian, and grandfather always prayed. Well, when he was at school, at the school, they had taught the students how to pray too, and he said, I pray every night before I go to bed. But grandfather said, you can pray for special things. There are special things, and God will hear. Oh, he got kind of impatient. He says, well, sometimes you can do something. You can help along, and you can do something, and help out. And, but he, he said, I have just, I have tried all summer. I have tried all summer. And there was tea plantations all around. But they had to work seven days a week. And the farms, they had to work seven days a week. Well, he could have been a houseboy. But that made it. He had to work seven days a week, too, and had to work on Sabbath, or even a cook boy. So there was nothing he could do. Well, he'd go, I'll plant a garden. So he planted a garden. He would take it down to the village where the, the people came and bought their vegetables and stuff. 
And he tried planting his garden, but there was a drought. When there's no rain, does a garden grow very well? No. He had a drought, so he had no vegetables to sell. And he goes, I'll go to the pond and I'll catch fish. Ugh. I've been to the market and I saw those fish and they stink. Ooh. And I think what they do is they put them in water and soup and make it for flavoring. But the people buy them, but the people there were so poor. They, didn't, they couldn't go and buy his fish. They would go get their own. And so he says, well, I have tried everything. I guess perhaps I will pray like old Menwala. And he goes, I want he didn't want to be seen. And he said, I'm going to go out in the bush. I'm going to go out into the bush. And there was a big rock out there in the bush. And I'm going to go behind the rock, and I'm going to pray. And as he was kneeling there and praying, he also remembered that grandfather said, if there's anything between you and God, you need to make it right. You need to go make it right. And he goes, oh, just the other week, he had gone and stolen a papaya off of a tree of bamboos in the bamboos yard. And he goes, oh, I need to go make that right. He jumped up, and he was heading to his house. And then he remembered, if I go to the next village, there is papaya on the trees over there. And I'm going to go and buy one of those. So he went to his house his hut. He had a few pennies. He went there and he went and bought a papaya, one even bigger than he had stolen. And he went and took it to Bambo's place. And Bambo forgave him and said, thank you. That was for the little old grandma that was in the house that didn't have any teeth. And she was so looking forward to a papaya. And she thought, oh, sweet and juicy and yellow fruit. She was so happy. So now he was heading back to his rock again, and he go, oh, there's another thing I need to do. I need to make right. Because last spring when I came home, I walked a long ways. It was 80 miles to school, and he had to walk that. And I was so tired. And Dad had asked him, can you help in the garden with the hoeing and stuff? And he goes, he did not want to do that. I don't want to do that. So he went in and laid on his, on his mat on the floor. And he, oh, I got such a stomach ache. I just hurt so bad. And then when people left, he was, I'm kidding. And somebody came, oh, I hurt so bad. And so he was making like he was sick, so he didn't have to work. He knew that wasn't being honest. So he went back to his village again and told his dad he was sorry. So now it was starting to get dark. It was kind of getting late, but he headed back to the big rock, and now his heart was just, oh, it was like God and him were just so connected. The sky was all clear and all blue, and he was so excited because now he was talking to God, and God was going to hear him. He got back under the rock and prayed to God and told him his problem and said he knew that God would answer his prayers. And when he got up from his prayers, it was dusk. And in Africa, in the bush, Africa has all sorts of animals. Big animals, little animals, snakes that crawling around. He goes, it's not good to go through the bush in the dark. I will go off to the distant road. And I'll go out of my way, and I'll go on the road. It'll be much safer. So I'll go that way. So he did. He turned around. He went on the road. And as he was going on the road, he was almost at the road, and he saw some rocks there. He kicked them around, and he goes, oh, there's some, there was a brown, brown piece of paper there. He went down, and he picked it up, and nobody in his village ever had a brown piece of paper, not even a little square inch of paper. That just didn't happen. They didn't have it. And here this was under the rocks and it was wet and soggy and he goes I wonder where it was from and he looked on there was he hardly could read the writing now this this is doesn't look like it's wet and soggy I had to find a piece of paper <laughs> and so it came from Mosin it looked like Mozambique Mozambique was a long ways away 
from where he was. But on that road, what he was going to take, a lot of times there were some big trucks that carried wheat back and forth, back and forth from Mozambique to other places. And somehow, this envelope must have fallen out. I'm going to look what's in the envelope. So he opens it up, and he opens it. Oh, my. What did he find? He found some, some money in there, and it wasn't even rotten like the envelope had been wet and soggy. The money was all safe. And he, go, he, he couldn't believe it. Had God answered his prayers? He got all excited. Now he was heading to home. And he wasn't, his head wasn't down. He wasn't kicking dirt. He was running. He was excited. He would wave to the women that were walk, talking in the village and to the grandmas that were working. And the next day he went to town and he was able to buy a blanket. And he was able to buy some material, and the seamstress or the sewer, the tailor, pulled out his treadle sewing machine, that's all that they had, and made him some trousers and a shirt, and he had money left over for his school bill. He was so happy. He was so happy he made things right, and he was so happy that he talked to God like Grandpa Gogo had told him to. Does God answer prayer? He does. Even in, a, in the little jungle villages of Africa, God answers prayers, and he answers yours too. If you have problems or if you're concerned, you can talk to God, and he hears you. Okay, thank you.